and all great things must come to an end. Uh, this would be my kind of final uh, tutorial in uh, the Able to Nine beginner course, keyword beginner. Uh, and what you should be doing is focusing on making loops uh, of your music that you want to make. Uh, the main part of the track uh, would be sufficient. And it's more, you know, to to kind of go in your own way. I know that sounds kind of lame. I wish I could, you know, I wish I was more articulate to teach, like, how to make epic skrillex beats and you know what people want to know but uh yeah so eventually um with lots of practice and some knowledge and some great sample packs you will get uh, a loop that sounds like this i made this on my stream two nights ago uh and uh generally it's it's like a puzzle, each each kind of piece. You, know, you have your kick, you have your bass line. Uh, you have a simple loop from a sample pack creator. You have a clap. And this is basically in encompassing uh, everything uh, that we, we learned. Um, and when you get to this point, you should focus on your processing. Uh, and that's very important. Your processing uh, is understanding EQ work, which is a big subject and very difficult to kind of comprehend uh, for the beginner. But uh, just play around. It's like low sounds to high sounds uh, and stick to one EQ, preferably parametric. Uh, and uh, to make your sounds kind of fit and to give yourself uh, some headroom naturally i'll just yeah i'll just bring you through it so the kick uh it's just a looped kick nothing too important i'll solo it why not and uh i took off a bit you know i always do it this way you don't have to but i always do to give the kick uh perceivably more umph at the end stage uh taking out things that i feel are unimportant to uh club pressure uh there's that um, and just a simple third-party synth um, hitting initialize and just creating something uh, on your own it's basically uh, a saw wave and a filter with a bit of filter drive and that's the baseline yeah and I took that added some color with some saturation just simple drive and I cleaned out uh, some of the areas that are kind of unimportant and compressed it slightly so, right, and uh, you'll get it. Uh, I just I started with a loop. This is how I started. Uh, no processing, just to get the track going. Um, nothing wrong with using loops. You should use them as often as you want, or as little as you want. Uh, typically, uh, I'll use something like this to uh, put a groove in my head, and I build around it. So you're basically using it as a reference. So nothing, nothing comes out of thin air. So that's basically what you do. Uh, clap, a simple clap. Didn't have enough space, so I gave it space by throwing a reverb on it. Simple, right? And uh, some percussive uh, kind of shuffly bits with uh, some delay. And yeah, uh, I guess I should go over um, and reiterate a few common problems you may run into and what you should look out for. Uh, CPU usage, this is not actual CPU usage. This is Ableton's processing um, threshold thing. It doesn't relate to CPU at all. It relates to your buffer and a number of things and it incorporates your sound card and your drivers and all that fun stuff and how many tracks are going on this is not real-time CPU thing a faster CPU helps but uh, this factors into a lot of things if you're getting a lot you know if your CPU is kind of maxing out what you can do is you can freeze uh, certain tracks and uh, generally say if I have this and it's a uh, 
it's a rompler synth and it's crazy and it's going nuts and they have lots of effects and i have a uh, fab filter and saturn and all that what you can do is you can right click on this and uh freeze it and you get that thing and what this does is this creates a temporary audio track uh, and basically it base yeah, it renders out this one track with the effects and everything um, so say oh yeah I'm not gonna use this anymore the processing is killing me so what this does is it frees up the processing it's the same sound right what the hell's that that was weird um, I thought someone was knocking on my door that was weird anyway um, uh, and generally, yeah, freezing, uh, you can do that. But say, oh, I want to I wanna, uh, edit it or edit an effect. I go unfreeze, and then it's back, and I can edit all these parameters, right? So you can do that. You can freeze it again, let's say that. Uh, but then you want it to just render up this one track, and you could solo and then render and then drop it in. But that's a waste of time. So what you do is you right-click and you flatten. And flatten for Photoshop users is basically the same thing flattens it, bam, flattens it to an audio track, and uh, you have no more processing taking up your CPU cycles. So that's so that's uh, really good. Um, I do that sometimes with leads. Um, leads get like really intense now uh, with lots of uh, reverb and delay, especially if you're using uh, like a convolution reverb or like a modeled reverb. It's a lot of CPU. Uh, you flatten it with that. Another thing people run into is uh, live has run out of memory and must close or something along those lines you get that when see we have our, our kick here and that's why I was drilling in consolidating so we have a kick and we have that right each one of these clips is kind of stored in the memory so if you have a lot of these clips uh, it'll use it up a lot so what you do is you know you select all oops you select like a bar and then you consolidate and then you can loop it over and it frees it up so like each clip especially if you have them loaded into the ram i don't have to because i have an ssd um but if you have them loaded into the ram each of these load into the ram and your ram goes crazy unless you're using 64-bit uh, you really wouldn't need to worry about that so that was um that was freezing and flattening yeah and consolidating uh those are some of your tools that you can use to free up uh, and prevent, you know, running out of RAM or running out of CPU. Uh, if you have a powerful computer and you don't use a whole lot of effects, that's fine. But this is also uh, valuable uh, if you just want to render something out into an audio track. And that's always positive, And then you're good to go. And then you can drag it to, like, another project or whatever. Uh, what else? Uh, panning. Panning is another thing. Jumping back to uh, EQing. So you get your loop. Uh, you EQ it to make it sound good. Uh, you are reducing the frequencies a lot of the times instead of um, enhancing them. Which you can enhance them too, but not that often. Because a lot of the times uh, people will want their bass to be loud. So they'll EQ and they'll uh, raise the low end up and it's like okay well that drowns out the kick so I'm gonna go to the kick and raise the low end of the kick and you get like a lot of sounds jumbling up and it sounds bad uh, and then the frequencies start canceling each other out so you say okay well let's just use you know extreme compression and like this is a big mistake so you don't do that uh, if, if you have a kick and you have a bass you want the bass to come through you lower the frequency of the kick so the bass can kind of poke through here or here or in the sub bass or you sidechain to give each sound their own way to kind of poke through um, another thing you can do if you have percussion if you have this and you have uh, something like a clap and they're kind of in the same area you pan them left and right and that solves the conflict of their frequency in a magical way And the goal is to have everything have their own sound. So you can listen to this. You know, I'm not I'm not extremely perfect at this, but you can listen. 
you can play this and you can pick apart each sound you know you know everything's there and you can hear everything and it's it's a magical thing uh, what else um, yeah filtering panning I went over that so generally yeah uh, start start with any sound loop it uh, depending on your style um, add a kick and just uh, go to town and what you should be doing is you should start with loops and make your loops sound good and when that when once that um, is good it's all about confidence really when you get confident with the main part of your track then you can arrange and build out and build out and uh, make a full track and then you can get into man um, m you can get into mastering and mastering is a lifelong journey so yeah, hope hope I've been a good introduction to Ableton Live. I recommend it to anyone. Uh, it's good for beginners and happy fun people. And yeah, hope you enjoyed it uh, and take care. Till next time.